Sorry. So I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna uh, hold your head okay, still. Hold still, honey. Honey, hold still. You, you, know, no, you can't try touch to cooperate that. with you can't us. Touch try to cooperate with us. All right. So let's fix this. Fix that here so it looks nice. All right. You know this chloro prep stuff kills everything. It's Good. Just, it's just great. So I'm just gonna clean with the chloro. Don't. No. No. Don't move. Don't move. All right. Let's get this out of oh, there. Yeah. Okay. Good. How does that look to you? Good. All right, so should we good. get started? Yeah, let's get started. Right. Hold on! <laughs> Don't you know anything about sterile technique? Can I help out here a little bit, guys? What we're going to do is show you exactly how to set up for a central line. Why don't you lie back down? So now what we're going to do is talk about the proper way of actually putting in a central line. And this is really geared towards sterile technique rather than the exact technique of putting in the central line because many of you have already learned that over the years exactly how to put it in. But what I've found over the years is that the proper sterile technique is, has been less than adequate in many situations. Okay, so first of all what you want to do is make sure the patient is comfortable and uh, well sedated if that's the case so that they can cooperate somewhat. The worst sterile technique is when the patient is reaching up into the field. So proper um, uh, sedation for the patient beforehand. The bed position, remember, it should be at a good height for you. Also, what you'll find is the head of the bed actually can be removed in most of the beds here in the Newton Wellesley Hospital ICU. Preparation of equipment is that the nurses are expected to actually bring in the equipment for you. The best thing to do is try to prepare a time with the nurse so that he or she can work with you to have this be the most efficient process um, as possible. They should bring in the central line kit, they'll know exactly the right one to bring for you as well as, as, well as all the draping. Proper draping, or rather proper uh, sterile technique involves gowning and gloving. What you should do before you start is you should take the alcohol based solution and wash your hands with that, if not also wash your hands at the sink. It create, you have to have full hat and mask. And remember, these should go on beforehand, obviously. And then, downing. Now, I really don't expect a lot of ways for you to down or to glove exactly properly, but as you recall from the days of third year med students, when you downed and gloved in the operating room, there is a way of doing it with a no-touch technique that if you have a real desire to do it properly, you'll try to figure out. I'll show you one time and what I'd recommend is to practice it. So again, what you need to do is you need to have the gown in opened up in front of you. You need to also have your gloves opened up. And what I'll do is keep my hands inside the gown, reach down, grab it, palm to palm. Again, no skin has touched anything. And I then wrap it around like that. And you can see my cups are actually still sterile. Again here, no, no skin has touched anything. Again, palm to palm. And then you're in your gown. Another place where a lack of sterile technique occurs, if you keep letting the gown come down in front of you, then you'll actually contaminate things. Your kit will have already been opened. And then prepare the area. In the past, when you used to use betadine, the issue was touch the center and circle out three different times. Now what you can do with chloroprep is actually paint the area. So you can paint a wide area. Remember, it's always proper to over-prep rather than under-prep. So I prepped the entire area to begin with. Drapes. Drapes are a significant personal preference. I will say this is a relatively new drape, and the beauty of this drape is a very large, clear plastic drape. My preference is to use it and not use the towels, and the reason I do it is because I like to see the landmarks. If you use towels, then you lose your landmarks. Also, on the inside here is a sticky area, so then when you put this down to the skin, as long as the chloroprep is dried, it actually will stick perfectly to the skin, preventing you from inadvertently putting your fingers underneath and making the field non-sterile. The other thing I think is a very good idea is as you open this, be careful because it's a very large thing. If you have an assistant, you can see that would be helpful too. 
And what you're going to want to do is open it in such a fashion that the long end, if you're doing an IJ or anything, is actually towards you. So what I'm looking at here is here is the hole in the net, the hole in the drape rather. It gets pushed down and the long area is now up towards you if you're doing the IJ. What I have here also is I've pushed it down very carefully so that even if I try to put my fingers underneath it, I'm actually unable to do so because the stickum is right down against the skin in uh, the complete circumference of the circle. Now what I ask also is that full drape involves a half sheet and the half sheet can be opened up by your assistant. You grab one end and because again it's an unwieldy very large thing, the best way of doing this I think is to hand it off to your assistant and then cover the area. For the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to put this kit on the patient. However, most of the times I do not because of the fact that any movement, it falls to the ground, you're constantly grabbing for things. So I think it's best to leave it on the bedside table. Some of the equipment in our kits that you may not be that familiar with are several things. One is that the catheter, the kit comes with a triple lumen catheter in it, and at Newton Wellesley Hospital, instead of using these kind of adapters on the end, we take those off and we put these in, these are called claves, and they're put on the end as so, like so. Remember, put it only on the blue and the white port, leaving the brown port open because that's the port that the wire is going to come through. The other aspect of this kit that you may not be that familiar with is something called a Rowlerson syringe. And this is very specific in that what it does, it allows you to find the vessel and instead of taking this apart and then putting the wire in through there, once you find it and get venous blood there, you can then take your wire and put it directly through the back, the plunger of the syringe and it goes through. One last thing in terms of sterile technique I'd like to show you is the ultrasound device. This is an area that there can be certainly a big break in sterile technique and Anne if you would hold, uh, ask me the sterile sheath first please. At the time of making this video, what we have is a relatively short sleeve for this, so it needs to be very careful. Hopefully in the future you won't be dealing with this, you'll be dealing with a sleeve that's quite a bit longer. But right now it's relatively short. What you need to do, just to remind you, is you need to put ultrasound gel on the ultrasound probe itself. So you can do that for me, Ann. And then you'll put this down in there. And then you'll wrap it up like this. Be very careful with this, in the, with the current situation, with the sleeve being so short because you can easily wrap it right across the sterile field and making it an unsterile field. Remember too, with this ultrasound, uh, with the sheath, it needs to be right up. Air is the enemy. Ultrasound gel on the inside, ultrasound gel on the outside. Thank you. I think that's really about it. Uh, remember too here that the nursing staff is, uh, wants to help you. They want to be involved with the procedure. They're there to assist you. They're there to also remind you if, in fact, uh, there's been a break in sterile technique. Thank you. Have fun putting in the lines and be safe.